Hi, my name is Kent Lee and I teach computer science at Luther College. In this video I'm going to introduce you to object-oriented programming and in particular not only using objects but also implementing a class that describes a certain set of objects. An object is, a, is an entity that has some kind of attributes. Um, let's pretend for a moment that we want to create a cat object. So a cat has a name. Um, for instance, uh, possibly curious would be the name of a cat. Um, it has an age, perhaps 10 would be its age, and it has um, some weight associated with it. Um, so let's say 7.2 pounds. Um, a, a cat might have other attributes as well, um, but perhaps we don't care about those attributes. And in this video, I guess we're going to be concerned about its weight and uh, its name and its age. Um, and we're going to run a simulation of what it's like in a day for a cat. Um, so I've got two cats myself. I have Curious and I have Mother, um, both uh, neither named by me. Um, certainly strange names unless you have a, a very young son that is naming, naming them. Um, and uh, they're approximate ages are 10 and 15 and their approximate weights are here and we're creating two objects here one cat and another cat now cat is not something that comes along with Python it's not something that's predefined so if I want to create a cat like this I'm going to have to declare or write what's called a class in Python so I'm going to have to say what is a cat and how do I create a cat and what kinds of things can I do with a cat object. So if I want to describe a cat, I write a class called cat. And here I have a class called cat. And there are various parts to that class. The first part of that class is called the constructor, and it's given a special name, underscore, underscore, init, underscore, underscore. And in that constructor, we provide the attributes that we want to provide, or we, we declare the attributes that we want to provide when we create a cat object. So in this case, when I create a cat object, I'd like to provide its name, and its age, and its weight. And then so I put those as formal parameters of this init method or init um, function that's a part of the cat class here. Um, name is the, is the uh, name of the cat, age, and the weight, those three fields there. So you can see how they match. So when I get ready to construct a cat, and that's what I'm doing here in this, in this program, when I'm getting ready to construct a cat, I say the, the name of the class, cat, and a left parent, and then these attributes that I'm going to pass to the constructor, the name, the age, and the weight. Okay, well, as after I've created a cat object, I may want to come along and get the name of the cat later on. So here I have an accessor method, getName, that's going to return the name of the cat, and I write cat1 dot get name to get that name of that cat. The name, the name method is down here. Here's the name method that's being defined inside the class cat. It's still indented inside the class cat there. So that's something that I can call on a cat object because I've declared it as part of my class. I can also have my cat speak. In this case I'm going to have it say meow, I would like it to say meow if it's hungry, um, if there's nothing in its stomach, and uh, purr if it does have something in its stomach. So um, I don't know exactly how that's going to happen, but I know that there is this method called speak that will return what the cat has said, either meow or purr. Um, and that, again, I can call because I've defined a speak method over here that's part of the cat class. And you can see there's nothing inside the parentheses, and there's nothing inside the parentheses here. So when I call speak, I'll call this speak method, and it will go ahead and execute for cat1. And when I say cat2.speak, I'm going to call the speak method on cat2. So um, cat2 will be uh, cat2 speak method will be executed. 
I can also feed a cat. You can see here I've got cat1.feed and cat2.feed. This time there's something in the parentheses, uh, the number of pounds that I'm going to feed the cat. And if I look over here at feed, there's the amount inside the parentheses. So if I say cat1.feed, I'm going to feed cat1 and cat2.feed, and I'm going to feed cat2. Okay, and we've got next day is another method that's going to be called, which is part of our simulation here, and, and next day will be called there, and, and we call those methods again there. So that's how I would go about using a cat object. And again, cat is not provided by Python, so I'm going to have to declare a cat class to be able to use a cat object in my program. Now, with, this is the way we use the object, but the object has to be implemented as well, and you can see over here that various parts of this class have been blanked out. The reason these parts have been blanked out is because from the outside, when using the object, this is our view of what a cat is. We can provide a name, age, and weight when we create it, and we can call feed and next day and speak and get name and get weight. That's the publicly visible part of a cat. The cat has an, a name, age, and weight that we provide, but we don't really get to those things directly. If we want the weight, we call get weight later on to get the weight. If we want the name, we call get name later on to get the name. But we don't access those attributes directly. So in my program, when I've created a cat object, I end up with an object two objects that look like this. I create cat1 and I pass the name, age, and weight to the constructor and I get this object and I've got the three fields inside of it and when I create cat2 um, I, I am going to get another object that looks surprisingly similar but with a different name, age, and weight for that cat as well. Um, these are the objects that I've created in the main program and that's, that's what an object looks like. But I still have to describe um, how this object gets created and how we're going to get the name, age, and weight from the cat because cat isn't built into Python. It's something that I have to provide. So I have these, this, these two ways of looking at the world. I have the, the using an object over here in def main, but I have this cat class implementation that is the implementation of a cat over here that I'm going to have to understand as well and this is part of implementing a class. So we have using a class and implementing a class. So when I'm implementing the cat class I have a class definition here and now we can see the whole thing because we're going to concentrate on the implementation of it. So we can see the whole cat class implementation here and we notice that there's an extra parameter for every one of these functions called self. Every one of these methods that's part of the cat class has a self parameter that has been added to it. Now we didn't see the self parameter when we were looking at the main code. Over here when we created a cat we and called for example speak we didn't provide the self parameter here. That's because the self parameter is being provided right on the left side of the dot. So self is the object that the speak is being called on. Self, when I say cat1.speak, self is going to point to cat1. And when I say cat2.speak, self is going to point to cat2. So self is something that the class uses to decide which object it is to help us know which object it is that we are working with at a particular point in time in the, in the program. So if I'm working with, with cat1, self is this special reference that is going to be pointing to the object that I'm working, once, working with. So if I, if I write cat1.speak, Python is going to make self point to this code right here so that I don't have to be worried over here when I'm writing the speak method about which cat it's being called on. The cat that it's being called on is the one that self points to. You notice there's no place in here where I say cat1.stomach or, or anything about cat1 or cat2. I only use self. So self is pointing to the current object here, the object that I'm going to be working with. So here when I call cat1.speak, I am 
calling the speak method, and Python is going to make self point to the same thing that cat1 points to. We can see that cat1 points here, so self is going to point here as well. So that sums up object-oriented programming in Python. In Python, we write one class definition, which is going to be used for all instances of that class. So this class, cat, here, is used for both cat1 and cat2, and we don't have to be worried about which instance these methods are being called on, um, because Python is going to set self to point to the instance that we are calling the methods on. If I write cat1.speak, I'm going to call the speak method here, and self is going to be pointing at cat1. And if I write cat2.speak in my program, I'm going to call speak here with self pointing to this cat2 object. And this code in here will work regardless of which uh, instance it's being called on. Self.stomach will either be cat1's stomach or cat2's stomach, depending on which object it was called on in either cat1 or cat2. So object-oriented programming in Python is is built into so hopefully that makes it clear for you exactly how to write a class and uh, use that class within a program. In the next video I'm going to show you how to use inheritance in your programs. Inheritance is a feature of object-oriented programming that allows us to reuse code.